Sears Telegame Speedway 4. This is a really cool Pong slash car racing dedicated video game console. I mean, Atari and Sears made a lot of these dedicated consoles back there back then. One of my favorites is the video pinball one, which I've done a video on a long time ago. Love that console. This is what I remember seeing for sale at Sears. I think they had, if I remember right, they had a demo set up on a TV for you to play. I'm pretty sure I remember playing this back then. Uh, I wanted to get one, but you know, I didn't. I, I didn't get one back in the day for Christmas or anything. I do remember seeing these pop up every once in a while back then in yard sales. Back in the early '80s, I used to go to a lot of garage sales, yard sales, things like that. And a lot of times I would find these old dedicated consoles like this, like the Odyssey consoles and the original Pongs and things, pop up quite often in yard sales. Uh, I do remember seeing this at a yard, at a yard sale before. Uh, kind of wish I would have picked it up then, but at the time, uh, I was really into my my uh, Bally Astrocade and my Atari home computer and stuff. So these older dedicated consoles didn't have a lot of appeal to me back then. It's like, had you known what they would be now, I should have picked them up. But ah, such is life. But anyway. <clears throat> I don't know how many of these were ever produced. I couldn't find any information on production numbers. Uh, I see a lot more of the dedicated Pong consoles made by Atari and Sears than I do of these. So I don't know if maybe they had a less production number or maybe these are just being held on more by people out there. But they do appear on eBay every once in a while. That's where this one came from. Uh, it finally popped up on eBay. I've, I've been looking for one of these for a number of years. I think when I started getting back into game collecting again back in the early 2000s, this was high on my list to try to find. I wanted to find one complete in the box, uh, but I would take pretty much anything as long as it was this console. Uh, basically, all I got was just this console and the two controllers. I didn't get the two extra controllers that it come with, and I didn't get the adapter, uh, the little TV adapter and stuff like that. I didn't get the box or anything. But I don't care. I'm pretty happy to have this in my uh, collection. I figure I'll just keep an eye out. Maybe someday I'll find in the original manual. And maybe I'll find a box for it in the future. You never know what will pop up, up, up out there. Now one of the neat things about this console is, like I said, it featured the regular Pong games. But also it featured a car racing game as well. And just like the other dedicated Pong consoles, we have a game select switch down here. So games one, two, three, and four. Of course, we have our on-off switch. We have the game start. And this is what I think is really cool about this, the Pong unit in this, is we have a switch that's like between a human opponent or a robot opponent. So you can actually play a one-player version of Pong that's not squash, where you're hitting against a, a solid wall, but you're actually playing a computer-controlled player on the other side of the screen. That's awesome. So if you want to play Pong by yourself, you were able to do that by having another person to play with. That was a really cool feature to have in this console, I believe. The hand controls are, are pretty basic. I mean, they use these in a lot of the other dedicated Pong codes. They're a little, nice little potentiometer action there. This one had, what is that? There's, some, there's a price on the bottom of this thing. I, I didn't notice that. What, what's it say? It says, Deseret Industries, $1.50. Huh. I wonder if this was in a yard sale at one time. Because this thing is actually hardwired to the, to the base. You can add two more controllers by plugging them in on the sides right here. Those you can find pretty much anywhere. I'm thinking about picking up a couple more controllers to complete this set as I try to build this up to a complete unit in the future. I love the logo up here. Speedway 4. There's a little picture of an Indy car. That's pretty cool. Of course, we have our RF connector in the back. We have our... our uh, where's the power port? Right there. Right down there. Oh, can't see it. Get that out of the way. There we go. The battery eliminator circuit. Now this runs on six C batteries, which you would take the 
cover off the base down here to get to that. It's just like the, the Pong systems did. Uh, if you'd like to see a box version of this with all the with all the trimmings, you can check my buddy's channel, uh, John Hancock. He did a video, unboxing video of one of these. He found one complete in the box. I, I was so envious when he posted that because I've been looking at one for years. But it's a fun video to watch. And I want to thank Bass Atari over on the Atari Age forums. Hope I said his name right. Uh, he actually has two of these, and he has a manual. He scanned in the manual for me and posted it over on Atari Age uh, for anybody to download. Very happy he did that. So I've got a printed off manual for this now. Uh, I'll put a link down in the video description below if you want to go to the Atari Age site and download this manual for yourself. It's pretty cool. I'm, I'm pretty happy about that. Also in that form, you know, John Hancock replied and, uh, you know, congratulated me on final one. Thanks, John. I appreciate it. Uh, I still envy you for having a box version. He asked a question, which I think is pretty interesting. What would you consider harder to find? This Pong unit here or the Telstar Galaxy? Huh. You know, I've seen a Telstar Galaxy only on his video channel. I've never seen a Telstar Galaxy in my life anywhere. I don't remember being on store shelves you know, back in the day. I've never seen one at a flea market. I've not seen one at a retro game store that I've been visiting. You know, I've visited over the, over the years. I didn't know it even existed until John posted this video and I started doing research on old Telstar games and saw it was on the list along with some of the other ones. I had been doing a small little series of videos called uh, Telstar something. I can't remember the name of the titles, but I was going through and talking about each one of the Telstar Pong units and stuff. Uh, I haven't finished that series yet. I haven't worked on it quite a while, but it was a pretty fun series to work on. Man, do I ramble a lot. Oh, before we hook it up, let's look at the manual real quick. This is the one, the Baskatari supply that I printed off, put a nice little folder here to keep it nice. I like to find an original one sometime in the future, like I said. Anyway, so it goes over the assembly operations, the maintenance, the troubleshooting, and replacement parts. And this here's all the controllers, shows the extra controllers that you can plug in to the sides. And of course, how to install the switch box in the back of your TV. I remember switch boxes very, very well. You know, my Fairchild, the Bally Astrocade. I had a whole bunch of different RF boxes at one time. I got rid of them all. I didn't really use them. They took up space. How to install the batteries by popping over the bottom of the, the cover. Describes the switches. Then it goes into the games. So we have tennis, the human games. A tennis 101, tennis 2x2, four player tennis game, which is a lot of fun. You got a, a group of people over. Then you have tennis the robot games. Awesome. Tennis robot 101, tennis robot one on two. That's pretty cool. I think this is the best feature of this Pawn console. Because so I remember when I got my first Pawn console, I always had to find someone to play with. I always wished there was a way to play the machine itself. And this would have been great to have back then, had it come out, you know, earlier, before, before I could actually get the thing. I got the Pong instead. Anyway, you have hockey, which is a classic game. It's usually on all the Pong systems. And of course, you can play hockey against the robot. Awesome. Then we have Race, which is a two-player race game. And it's, it's an interesting game. Basically, it slowly accelerates, and you try to avoid the traffic, of course. And the first one to make nine hits of the traffic loses the game. So it scores a little bit odd. Uh, you think it would count the cars you pass, and whoever got the highest number within a certain amount of time, well, it doesn't have any kind of time limit on it. Basically, what it's looking for is Whoever crashes the most first, nine crashes, they lose. <laughs> so that's your goal, is not to crash as much as the other player. Then we have what's called Demolition. 
Demolition, which is one player as well. It's kind of like kind of like the same thing. Then playing pointers, we shows how the ball will react on the paddle, depending on what volley that you're, you're on. So when the ball hits your paddle the second time, it could pop off in a totally different direction. It kind of randomizes how the ball reacts a little bit, which is pretty neat. Makes it makes it interesting. And of course, how to care for your Sears Telegame Speedway Four. Then we have like a troubleshooting checklist that you can go through. More troubleshooting. And then the back page, which tells you some of the replacement parts. You know, like you need a hand controller, the switch box, the battery cover plate, uh, a rubber feet, the owner's manual. Pretty cool. What's really neat is. Uh, the chip that's in this was also in another scaled down game. Uh, I can't remember who made it, but it was called Indy 500. And it was basically the same stuff, uh, but it was made uh, a cheaper version of this. And I think it was sold by Sears as well. Not 100% sure. I've never seen one of those ever. Uh, it would be kind of cool to have one of those as well, I think. All right, now let's get to hooking this thing up and trying the games. Before we check out the games, one neat little detail I forgot to mention earlier on is the design of these paddle controllers. If you notice, we have a stepped controller here, a knob. And what that, what that's good for is this gives you quicker response per how far you turn, and this gives you greater control when you turn on the outside. So you have to move your fingers farther to get the paddle to move the same amount as this small movement here. So it's kind of like a little fine tuning adjustment there that you can do while you're playing the game. Have more control or faster speed with your paddle. It's pretty awesome. All right, let's check out the games. All right, turn it on. We'll go over here to the tennis game. So what, I'm going to put it on robot, so you see the robot's taking over now, and away we go. Oh, got a point already. Oh yeah. Oops. Oh, come on. Oh! The robot's not too bad. I think it's really cool that it has that feature so you can play by yourself. Oh man. Oh yeah. Yes. Oh man, I'm gonna lose. Game over. <laughs> then go over to game number two, which is hockey. Reset. Oop. Yes! The first point is Willis! Oh yeah! I like the uh, the background color where it starts green on one side and goes to orange on the other. A little rainbow thing going on. It's kind of cool, so it's being black and white. Oh, jeez. Ah. Oh. oh, there we go. Come on. Willie's got to win at least one game here. Yes, two more points. Oh, but am I going to win? Yes, I did. Ah. Awesome. Then game number three, this is the uh, race game where you can't play the robot, unfortunately. It would have been cool if you could have, but this is mainly a two-player game. So ideal, what you want to do is you want to race your car and avoid the other cars, and every time you crash, you get a accident point. 
So the first person to reach nine crashes loses. Kind of a cool game. But there is a one player version that's called Demolition. It's kind of it's the same game, you only have nine crashes you can do. But this time you try to see how long you can go. So you need a stopwatch or something, somebody to keep time if you're playing against another person or against yourself to see how long you last before you reach nine crashes. So we'll go ahead and play this one. Game reset on, off. Away we go. Would have been nice to have like a little push button for the game reset though. Instead of that switch. I don't like that floppy switch, that flip switch for the game reset. But it's still cool. I like this game, this racing game. It's simple, but it's fun. Oh, oh no, you don't. That's that car it freaks me out every once in a while. It tricks me. I mean, it's right in the center of the screen, so you have like barely enough room to get by on one side. I'm sure there's a pattern to these cars that once you get it worked out and figured out, you can pretty much zip right on through this. Ah, oh, I overreacted. Oh, no, you don't. It's that tricky car again. Oof. Ooh, see how close that is? You're, you're very limited in the range of motion you can have. I mean, that's pretty much it right there. It reminds me a lot of that classic Metallotronics game Auto Race, the way this game plays. You still have a gear shift. Oh! Look at that. It's right up against it. This side. This side. Oh no! Oh! <laughs> I crashed. Rats. <laughs> okay, I think we need to play uh, the wife against these games. Tennis selected. Get reset and go. Yes. <laughs> yes. Ah, that was a fastball. Zoom, zoom. Oh. <laughs> oh, my humiliation is going to be complete today, I guess. Ha. <laughs> Usually you do pretty good with the Pong games. <laughs> yeah, but this one, the bar is too short. Hey, yeah. at least I didn't lose at zero. <laughs> I mean, there's a little bit of respect in me getting a couple points there. So, game of hockey. Ooh. Oh. Oh, jeez Louise. <laughs> <laughs> now, even though I will probably lose, at least I won't lose by nothing. <laughs> you didn't have to move at all on that one. Oops. Well, I should have moved on that one. set up. Boink. Oh! That almost didn't work out too well. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> oh, there we go. Try to get out of its, out of its rut here. Oh! 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 Oh my god, look how fast it starts going after a while. Oh! 
all that work and I still missed it. Is this tennis yeah. or, ho is or hockey? This is hockey. Hockey. Yeah, tennis would be different. Yeah. We wouldn't have the bars at the sides if it was playing tennis. That's true. Oof! I do too well on this one. Well, you completely wiped the court with me on the first one, so it's only fair I should get to win something. Although we might be here for a while. <laughs> <laughs> or not. Oh! Whoa. That almost went right by me. Like that? <laughs> Six to six. Check it out. Oh. You guys are having four people play this? Oh, my Lord. It has that capability. That would probably be pretty intense. Would you have you two on each side? Yeah, you well, two people on each side. You could at least, you could block the hole better. You could have one be a goalie and the other one, you know, actively go after the ball. Yeah. the ball or I guess in this case the puck oh no it's getting kind of crazy yeah oh eight to eight yes <laughs> yes I think I just handed you that one you did how we're going to do race. Alright, here we go. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Rats. That car gets me every time. Oh, yeah. It looks the same. It, it, it's not. It's barely to one side. I know, but it it's, looks the it's same. It's there to trick you. Like oh, that? Yes. <laughs> ah! I just haven't learned the pattern yet. Oh, oh yeah, there we on. go. I was, far, I was on the correct end and I still hit it. That is just so wrong. Oh, come on. Can I check your license? Oh, oh yeah! Oh, it got me again. Oh, come Yay! on. <laughs> Victory is mine. <laughs> Pretty cool game. Yeah, it is. It's kind of neat that it has all three. Well, that was Sears Telegames Speedway 4, another really cool dedicated Pong console from the 70s. Did any of you ever see one of these in person? Uh, I know these are pretty old, and you got to be an old guy like me to kind of remember these being on the shelves uh, back then, but it'd be kind of cool if anybody's ever seen one of these in person. If you have, tell me your story about where you saw one for the first time. Have you played one before? All that kind of good stuff. As always, everyone, thanks for watching. Thanks for watching.